save up to 50% on your medicine bills. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if PharmaDynamics has a generic medicine that's suitable for you. Much like our feelings toward the cost of food and the price of petrol, many of us can actually hear our wallets emptying out as we walk into a pharmacy. Medication may be pricey, but they are a necessity when illness strikes. This is where generic medicines become important as they make healthcare more affordable for everyone. So we asked the public how they actually feel about generic medicines. If I have to choose between generic and brand names, I would choose the cheaper one. I know when it comes to kiddies medicine, they always try to give a generic. Uh, I'd choose a brand name medicine over generic medicine. I would choose uh, the, the brand name. Because I trust it more. It guarantees that you're getting good quality. Scientifically, it's been improved. From the process of how they are made of uh, security factors. I would choose whatever gets prescribed to me. And the reason why I would go for the generic is that uh, they're much more cheaper than the brand names. So why pay more for something that will do the same thing? It might have worse side effects than your brand name medicine itself. I, I have used uh, generic medicines and uh, the result was uh, the same as the brand uh, medicine. Joining me in studio is Mariska Fushia, the Marketing Manager of Pharma Dynamics. Welcome to Doctor's Orders, Mariska. Thanks for having me, Riyadh. Could you actually explain to the public what generics actually are? Riyadh, generic medicines are basically products that contain exactly the same active ingredient or active pharmaceutical ingredient in the same dosage form as what the originator does. And it's also a product that has been registered by the Medicines Control Council in South Africa, which is our regulatory body that, that oversees all registrations of new products and makes sure that it is safe and effective for, for everyone to take. And they, they, they are registered using a, a study called a bioequivalent study. Basically, to try to explain what bioequivalence is, mm. I'm, I'm going to explain two different things about a specific drug. Yes. You either get the effect of the body on the drug, you take the tablet orally, and your body will absorb it, it will distribute it throughout the body, it will be metabolized, it yes. will be excreted from the body. So that is your pharmacokinetic properties of the drug. And then you also get, the on the other side, the effect that the drug will have on the body. In other words, the clinical effect, lowering your blood pressure, treating your pain or inflammation, etc. And that's your pharmacodynamic properties. And when we test for bioequivalence, we test the pharmacokinetics, in other words, what the body will do on the drug to make yes. sure that it, it, if the, it's the same active ingredient, it will be absorbed in the same way, it will be distributed through the body in the same way and eventually excreted from the body in the same way. And there has been many clinical trials or studies being done to test whether you, when you register a product using bioequivalence, that you actually do get the same clinical effect. And no study has actually been uh, available to prove that when a product was registered using bioequivalence, that it does not have the same clinical effect as the originator product. So it's the same quality as the originator product. It's not like uh, the Hong Kong version of the originator. No. It's as good, it's just a different brand. Absolutely, it's a different brand. It's been manufactured in a different facility, obviously, because it's a different company. But it has been registered using criteria that's used globally by yes. the USA's FDA, the UK's MHRA, and so forth. And we in South Africa, the MCC, uses the same criteria to register medicines, generic medicines, as what is being used in other countries as well. And Mariska, how do people actually know that the generic is actually the same as the originator? I think the easiest way for uh, the people out there, the patients, to confirm that um, the product that has been dispensed, especially has been substituted um, if they have been on an originator product in the past, is if I can refer to the screen, to have a look at the package insert that's supplied in the pack that has been dispensed to you. If the active ingredient on the, the originator package insert and the generic package insert is the same, it means that the Medicines Control Council actually approved that package insert and they confirm that the two active ingredients are exactly the same. When can a generic medicine actually be introduced into the market? 
When an originator company start research and development of, of their product and they discover a molecule where they, where they think it might have a specific clinical effect, they register a patent for that molecule. Yes. And that time frame is usually about 20 years. They start their research development, uh, formulating it into a form that you can actually take it as a tablet or a capsule or suspension, etc. And depending on how long that research takes, after their registration process with the regulatory authority, they will then have the remainder of the 20 years as an exclusivity period in a specific okay. country. So um, after that exclusivity period um, expires, the patent expires, Pharmadynamics or a company as a generic company can launch a generic product once it's been registered by the regulatory authority using bioequivalent studies. And then afterwards, once you test the pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic properties, it actually works as well as the originator uh, Absolutely. Product. One of the major obstacles people face with genetics is that they think they don't work as well as a brand name product. In some cases, this can even lead to a phenomenon called the nocebo effect. The nocebo effect can basically be described as worrying yourself sick. To understand it, compare the nocebo effect with the better known placebo effect. The placebo effect is where the expectation of treatment brings an improvement of symptoms. The nocebo effect is the occurrence of negative effects or symptoms simply because the patient expects a negative outcome, even if the medication is proven to work otherwise. The nocebo effect is also one of the reasons patients reject generic medicines. Mariska, why do people have such negative perceptions about generics? Riyad, I think all of us don't like change, or a lot of us don't like change. Most of us don't like change. And if your product has been substituted, not by a doctor prescribed, it has been substituted or it's enforced by a medical aid, for instance, to change to generic, to, to the cost saving of the generic product, we do see that nocebo effect that we've just learned about. Mm. And we do have that negative perception. And it's not only in, 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 in medicines that we do see this negative perception. We see it all over. Yes. Cars, food, um, everything that costs less, we have the perception that when I pay less, I will compromise on the quality and the efficacy and the safety of that product. Mm. So now, how can it be more affordable since it's exactly the same? It boils down to the research and development of the originator companies yes. and the business models that differ between them and pharmaceutical industry, the generic pharmaceutical industry. Um, mostly, as you know, they need to do that research and development. It does cost money. They do invest a lot of money. Yes. And what we also must remember is not all medicines that are researched and molecules that are researched actually do see the light and do come into the market. So they have to, through the products that are actually effective and that are launched onto the market, they need to recoup some of that investment and fund so-called failed products that, that for some reason side effects and, or, or that didn't see the, the clinical effect or they had adverse events um, with that product and it is actually never approved by the regulatory authorities to be marketed in, 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 in the country. That's the one reason and they, their business model as I've mentioned is also different. They, the originator companies work on a, a smaller volume but larger um, value or cost of the or higher cost of the products. Generic companies, our business model is based on higher volumes and lower cost, which is substantially different from what their business model so is. That's a business model difference also. Because generic medicines are actually cheaper, and this has probably also impacted affordability in South Africa amongst lower socioeconomic groups. How have you experienced that? I think generics through the years, in the last 15, 20 years, have expanded access to life-changing and more often than not life-saving medicines yes. to hundreds of thousands of South Africans. Um, to put it into perspective, six out of every 10 scripts in our country today is for a generic product. And because generics save on average about 50% on the cost of the medicine, yeah. we are saving South Africans almost six billion rand per annum. Wow. And that is in the private sector alone, that's not taking the public sector into account. Wow, those figures are quite impressive. So if a patient goes to a doctor and asks for a prescription, how do they know they're getting a generic and can actually ask for a generic? Absolutely. I think first and foremost, it is our responsibility to ask for a generic, yeah. to benefit from the cost saving of generic medicines. By law as well, pharmacists are required to inform you if there is a generic or more affordable option available for the product that has been prescribed by you. And what we must keep in mind, if we if we use generic products for, for molecules or treatments where generics are available, mm. we free up funds for, and that's on your medical aid, yes. or if you pay cash for your medication, for 
molecules that are still under patent should you need those more advanced or newer treatment options. Thank you so much, Mariska, for shedding some light on genetic medicines. After the break, we put pain in its place and investigate whether or not your microwave is nuking more than just your meals. Save up to 50% on your medicine bills. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if Pharmadynamics has a generic medicine that's suitable for you.